All right, hopefully the third time's a charm. For some reason, I keep doing this wrong. Anyway, what I'm doing today is I'm reorganizing my inks, which are brand new. And uh, I know I said I wasn't going to do that, but I did. I bought some new stuff because I just felt like I had to have them. So I bought the Tim Holtz uh, Distress inks in the little cubes because they could come in the little cubes. And so it saved me a little bit of money. And it takes up less space to store. And then, but the oxides only come in the big cubes. So I don't have all of them, but I have everything that was available to me at the time. And what I've done is I'm making labels. So I went into Microsoft Word uh, because the labels I found online didn't really work for me. Um, and I have a bunch of old postage labels that I've had for years and years, literally over 10 years. And it's almost half a sheet of adhesive label. So I just print stuff out on it all the time and then cut it up. Um, so I created a table in Microsoft Word. I've already started cutting on these, but I created a table, which is why you can see the black line. Now you can remove that if you want, but I actually wanted it so I could kind of keep them all the same size when I cut them. But you can change the color on it to make it a lighter color, or you can change it so it's dotted lines or dashed lines, whatever works for you. Um, I didn't even honestly think of that at the time. I did this last night and I was in a hurry because I'm always in a hurry. So um, anyway, I created the table and I did four across at two inches. And I don't remember, I think the width of each or the height of each box was three eighths. What I did was I had previously measured, you know, the straight part, the flat part of this and then this part. And so it was like two by three eighths. I believe the three eighths is correct. So that's what I made my table. And then I picked a font. In this case, I picked Birdhouse, which is one I got off font bundles in a font bundle, I believe. Um, I love a fancy font. And this one is fancy without being too fancy. It's not so fancy you can't read it because I do like those too, but I also like to be able to read it. And with my eyes aging, need a new prescription probably this has become my favorite font because it is easy to read but it still um, has some nice curve to it um, so anyway so I printed that out I kept I made a list of all of my inks I kept them in order in the order of the list so that when I printed them out they would still be in order and I wouldn't be hunting and pecking constantly for which label I needed. So now I'm just going to cut them out. So my next one is faded jeans. So I'm just trimming this. Now you can cut it however you want. I did cut the outside of the table on my trimmer, but for these thinner, smaller cuts, I just felt like it was easier for me to use scissors because they're not that big. And even though I can't really cut straight, whether I'm sewing or crafting, um, I didn't feel like it was going to really show up and make a difference. So, because my hands, I've always got lotion on, they're a little clammy all the time, I'm using a blank piece of the label to kind of burnish this down so it sticks really good. If I used my fingers, since I printed this on my inkjet, even though it's been probably 30, 40 minutes, I'd get smear. Uh, and that's just me. That probably isn't everybody, but it allows me to burnish it down really well. And uh, so it doesn't come up. So the next one is Broken China. So we're going to cut that one out. So I can get my fingers to hang on to it without cutting off my finger. Now I'm trying to cut right on the line, which I think in uh, woodworking terms is called the kerf. That's the part that you would hopefully lose when you make a cut. But as you can see, I don't quite manage to get that all the time. Now this is what I use to get the backing off because most of these I don't have a little edge on it. And this is a tool that I made. You can buy them. I think they're called pin pins, which is a silly name, P-E-N-P-E-N, -E -E or maybe it's P-I-N-P-I-N, -I or maybe it's P-E-N-P-I-N, -E because there is a little pin in the tip of it. I don't really know. But you can buy them. I made my own, and I will tell you how to do that if you're interested. It's actually quite simple. You just take a, a mechanical pencil, and you take all the lead out, and you find a sewing needle, uh, a hand sewing needle, 
that will fit in the end. Now, most of the time, is if you sew, you know that those needles come in packages of various sizes for different types of needles. I don't remember which size actually fit in here, but you release the pressure on it, and then you drop the pin in, or take it apart and put the pin in the other way, and then just keep pushing it to extend the lead, and the pin will eventually come out, and it just gives you a nice little pin. Now, it's sharp, and I have poked myself good a couple of times, so you do want to be careful. But it works really good for picking up fine stuff or for weeding, better than any of the weeding tools that I have, I will tell you that. Uh, and it was so easy to make. And I already had, because I do sew, I already had the sewing needles. In fact, I've got some of my mom's and probably my great-grandmother's old needles, as well as the pen. I already had that too. Or the pencil. It's actually a pencil. So that's how I made that. And it's really easy. And you can probably even find a video tutorial online if you're interested in making one for yourself. If you're doing a lot of um, removing of adhesive backing or weeding types things, they really do come in handy. Um, like I said, they are sharp. I have forgotten that I had it sitting in my tray over here and put my hand down to pick something up and poke myself really good. But um, And I don't retract it like you might a pencil lead because I don't want to have to fuss with it coming back out, which I don't know that it would be a fuss, but... Uh, okay, so you'll see that one side of these has a little, like, nipple, which, for lack of a better word, uh, from the manufacturing process. I like to put it on the flat side, which is any of the other three sides. But um, And I try to get it on straight, but, you know, this is, I'm not being graded. It's just for myself, so they aren't all straight. And this bothers me. You see the labels here. This is here. I gotta flip that around because that's just. I want to be able to pull it off my out of my organizer and see the color and the name matches. Oh, I've actually put those in the wrong place. They go over here on this stack. So anyway, that's how I put the labels on. Um, I have a few more to do, but I don't want to make you sit here and watch that. So now what I'm going to do is I, I got some Q-tips. There's probably other ways to do this, but I took Q-tips and I'm going to just pounce it in here, try to get it so that I try not to put my finger in it, which I did. Let's put, okay, got the lid, lid down. So then I'm just going to color in this little square. And you can be as precise or imprecise as you want. That's up to you. But you can see that that's colored in and looks pretty good. And, of course, I did go bigger than the box, but it's kind of hard to get that exactly even. Now, I know there's people out there that have printed a lot fancier labels. Um, they, their whole label might be the color of the ink. Uh, I wanted to be able to read it easily without struggling, so that's why I chose this option. But again, you can do it however you want. And the good thing about using a Q-tip is well, I can use the other end. So just pounce it in there. This is the broken china. And I'm just going to color that in. Basically, I'm just making a little dot. So it covers up the box completely because this stuff is opaque. So you won't even see the little box when you're done. Now, if you want to try to keep it in the box, oops, that hit the carpet, not the trash can. Okay, if you want to hit the little box, that's fine. You maybe can find something finer than a Q-tip or a different Q-tip. I don't know. Um, this is just what I have and I'm determined to try and just use up what I have instead of buying more stuff. I realized this morning that I just keep buying stuff and I have to quit because we are going to be moving eventually, whether it's six months or three and a half years, and I do not want to have to take, I don't want to have to explain myself when I have to pack up this craft room. I would like a little help, and if he walks in here and sees this, he's going to be like, oh, you're on your own, <laughs> which... You know, I can't say that I blame him. There's a lot of stuff in here, and that's how I feel about his garage. So, you know. But, you know, we all do what we have to do. 
So that's the chip sapphire, and I love that one. I, I love them all. Who am I kidding? So anyway, just throw that used one in the trash. And then you pick up another one. And another Q-tip. This is dried marigold. Probably don't need to put quite as much ink on those as I've been putting on there. Nice. And here we have spiced marmalade. Now I put kind of grouped mine by colors from light to dark or dark to light. However you want to do it's fine. Um, I kind of like being able to find my colors by rainbow. Uh, everybody names their colors something different when they come out with a color line. I don't want to alphabetize them because that doesn't mean anything to me. So I put them in order of color and from light to dark. But again, you do you, do you whatever works best for you. Um, because that's what makes the world go round, right? So now we're doing right persimmon. Some of them actually do, the box does show through a little bit, so maybe that's just because I'm not getting enough of the oxide part on there, I'm not sure, but I don't really care about that. Um, I'm only saying anything, something because I had mentioned it previously. A couple of these I have had for a few years, but most of them are brand new. Don't tell anybody. Okay, so that one's used on both ends. So you toss it in the trash and you just keep going till you get them all done. And then I will put them in my organizer and at some point I'll have another video for organizing because I'm trying to organize this whole workspace. So I've got some other stuff and we'll gradually get on to other videos. I do have, y'all probably think I'm silly because I'm 56 years old, but I do have this paper mache unicorn and I'm going to cover it and I'll try to remember to record it when I do. And I'm going to uh, decoupage it with, I think I'm going to use these napkins. I like these flowers. I did myself a stainless steel tumbler in them once. And after about a year, I dropped it on the cement sidewalk and put a good dent in the bottom so it doesn't sit flat anymore. But it still works otherwise. Um, so I think I'm going to use some of these for this horse. Now they might be a little bit big and I do have lots of others I can <clears throat> excuse me, choose from. But I love these colors and I love these flowers. So, you know, I'll probably get rid of the Louis the or the six. Um, you know, so I'll cut them down, but I think that's what I'm going to cover him with. I think that's what I've decided. And then I've got some jewels and some other stuff and I'm not going to cover him completely in the flowers. Um, because I think that's a little too much, but you know, we'll see. We'll see as we progress. But anyway, until then, um, happy crafting, and I will see you next time.